Why are you doing this? What are you hoping to achieve? Well, we have, as you know, we've long been known for creating content and anecdotally and by measurement, it seems like there's big demand for this kind of information. And actually, uh, with this food, yes, we are competing with media for attention, but we will actually cover topics and areas that I don't think get much attention from a traditional media. So I think there's a lot of white space and it's probably a little wonkier and more wide ranging and more in depth than the sort of the TikTok of what's happening in the daily news that you do extremely well. And I wouldn't want to compete with you on that. Not ever. So a mix of opinion and analysis on the site. Today I saw Stripes, Patrick Collison, his brother is going to be on the show a bit later. John, Ryan Peterson of Flexport wrote something. Do you see this as replacing or just complementing traditional media? I think it's, I see it as a complement to traditional media because there's important news coverage that has to happen all the time that we are not really well suited to do. We are using the asset that we have is we have a lot of in-house experts who have firsthand information because they have lived you know, open source business models or take whatever topic you have and they have access to fellow colleagues, fellow travelers who also have that. And we wanna surface that. We're less interested in, you know, all the stuff that you have been covering. I've, I've been watching the segment up until now and like none of those topics would be on a uh, future. Now, you and I have talked about this a lot over the years as your thinking has evolved. Our audience hasn't necessarily been privy to it, but you know, many journalists know that um, some folks at Andreessen Horowitz aren't fond of, of traditional media and, and traditional journalists. And um, some of them are asking, why the dislike? What is traditional media doing wrong or getting wrong, in your view? I think uh, media is getting a lot right, for sure. Um, I do think there, there was sort of a pendulum, which I also disagreed with in the early on. It's like, oh my god, there's another unicorn. Now we have a decacorn. Like People were writing about valuations, which I thought was sort of meaningless. And then the pendulum has swung all the way back to a lot of questions uh, are in the vein of when did you stop beating your wife? And if you think about the possible answers, there's no good one. So that has changed a little bit, but that's not why we're doing future. We are doing future because we think that there's a need for the tech curious, for the folks who, who are participants, who are fellow builders, whether they are in old style industries or in new industries or our entrepreneurs to figure out like the future and how to build it and how technology will help advance it. So I have to challenge that a little bit because you know, I know, you know, most journalists in my view are trying to do their jobs. They're not asking about wife beating. They're asking legitimate questions that should be answered. Why does it seem to you that the pendulum is swung too far in the wrong direction? Why? I mean, there's lots of uh, there's lots of off the record reasons that I could speculate, but I shouldn't speculate. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, it just has, and I think partly that's sort of human nature, and um, and people have gotten wary of the technology celebration, and that's their prerogative. I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I'm trying to accomplish a business goal, right? Our firm wants to advance the future and thinks that future uh, technology is a good force in the world. No and, problem. And we, sorry. I think Siri just talked to me. And we, um, we can still hear you. <laughs> yeah. By implication, uh, we think that hopefully that will make us attractive to entrepreneurs. And that's what our business is all about. As long as, you know, the three things that matter in venture capital is seeing the deals, picking the deals, and very importantly, winning the deals. If um, my function can help us see the deals, um, then I'm making a contribution to advancing the future. Sorry. So you're still on the show today, and it's a pleasure to have you. Um, do you still see value in traditional media? Do you still see value in Andreessen Horowitz, in your partners doing interviews in your portfolio companies, choosing between, let's say, a Bloomberg or the New York Times or Future? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think there is a bit, bit of a misconception. So let me let me say for the record, um, in the early days of building the Andreessen Horowitz brand, we did a lot of press work on behalf of the firm. Right now, most of the media stuff that we do is uh, in service of the portfolio. Because the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to be the place where we jump the shark and all we do is talk about ourselves. And I thought like I was, I, I was heading that way. So I think we made a correction that has been useful. And we've also have now a huge portfolio. So there are lots and lots of companies that are like, hey, we are trying to get a profile in publication X, will you help us? Which we want to support all day long. And we do that quite a bit. 
So then do you see, uh, you know, in big picture, do you still see value in an independent press covering Silicon Valley and how? Yeah, absolutely, there's value in independent press. Also, I'm not in charge. You know, this question <laughs> sort of makes it sound like I could make this decision. Uh, I, I would, uh, I don't get to make that decision. And of course there's value in independent media. And by the way, my firm, like I have several folks in the firm who are by my personal news service. They sent me stories all day long. We consume more media than I think many, many, many organizations. So we're voracious readers and listeners and, and uh, watchers of lots and lots of media. It's obviously an important function.